Welcome today to another edition of Fireside Chats. And for today, I am just thrilled to be joined by Mark Albrecht, who is the chief of the antimicrobials division at BARDA. Welcome, Mark. It's great to be here, John. It's it's so exciting to be able to have this opportunity to sit down and chat with you today. Well, I, I'm glad you feel that way about it, because the, the reason that I asked you to come today was, as you'll recall, at the ASM ESCMID developers meeting back in September in Boston this year on the closing day, everybody who had already left missed out <laughs> on your outstanding uh, closing keynote lecture on catalyzing development in the AMR space. And you know, what I loved about your talk was the breadth of the vision that you had mm -hmm. for what BARDA had been doing with, well, you'll, you'll give us the numbers here in a minute, but over the past decade, BARDA has been busily spending money doing a whole lot of very interesting things. And so what, I, what I'd like today to, for you to do here in a moment is reprise that talk for everybody so mm -hmm. that we can all hear it again. But before we do that, let me just ask a couple of general questions. Let me just start with kind of who is Mark Albrecht? And maybe I'll start with once upon a time, you got a degree in? I got a degree in microbiology. It was a PhD from the University of California, Riverside. And at the time I was really interested in human pathogens and understanding their interaction with the human biology and, and particularly those that are infectious. And from that point forward, I kind of went further into that space working with the Department of Defense, focusing in on their medical countermeasure enterprise against biological weapons, and then found myself here at HHS working on the development of therapeutics for the, the general population, uh, the civilian population, and really focusing in on antimicrobial resistance. Wow, so basically your PhD and then your something like maybe your postdoc was with the Department of Defense, and if I'm sort of guessing correct. correct. Yeah, wow. correct. So how long have you been working with the U.S. government in one form or another? Oh, close to 20 years now. Wow. Okay. And you've been with HHS since? I came to HHS uh, around 2012. Wow, so 10 years. Okay. And your role now at BARDA? So I'm now the chief of the antimicrobials branch at BARDA, really kind of providing the vision, the strategy around BARDA's investment in antibiotics addressing biothreat pathogens and antimicrobial resistant infections. Yeah, clearly you come to it with exactly the right background, a, a deep, deep training in molecular biology and human pathogens. So it's just a, sort of a perfect role for you in many ways, it, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, with that as background, um, let me just sort of set the stage for the audience. The ASM ESMA Developers Meeting, if you've never been to it before, is a about a three, three and a half day meeting that I highly recommend. It is jointly sponsored by the American Society of Microbiology and the European Society of Clin Micro and ID. And it's, it's now occurring yearly and it alternates sides of the Atlantic. And it's about 300, 400 people who are broadly interested in the issues of development. And so the committee this year asked you to give the closing keynote talk with your vision about how BARDA is catalyzing development in this space. And so um, let's go off to the talk. Uh, I'm, I'm listening and you're speaking and off we go. All right. Well, thanks again, John, for this opportunity. Like you said, I think it's a great chance to be able to reprise this presentation. Several people were still in attendance at that day. I think there were about 100 people still in the audience, so kudos to them for sticking around. But this, of course, gives me a chance to, to distribute this presentation, the message and the information to a much broader audience. So, so to start with, we should talk about the Administration for Strategic Preparedness and Response. And this is the lead federal agency that is responsible for ensuring that the nation is prepared for able to respond to and recover from a public health emergency. Now, these emergencies take many different forms. It could be a natural disaster. It could be a man-made malicious event, like a, a chemical attack, a biological attack, or a nuclear detonation. All of these and more fall within the mission space of ASPR. Now, to, to ensure that we are prepared and able to respond to those events, ASPR really has three critical priorities for it. One is the development and procurement of medical countermeasures to really support that response effort. We also are able to send out clinical teams 
to areas affected by these events to aid in that recovery effort. And finally, we work with our communities, our interagency partners, uh, local jurisdictions to help them understand what the threats are around us and what sort of medical countermeasures are available to them during a public health emergency. Clearly, the work that ASPR does today is more important than it has ever been. As we have seen with COVID-19, the ability to rapidly stand up a development and procurement program to ensure that we're able to recover quickly from an emergency is critical to getting back to our daily lives. Now, a key component of that can be found on slide three, and this is BARDA. BARDA is the largest group within ASPR, and we are focused in on the development of medical countermeasures to address chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats, as well as pandemic influenza and emerging infectious diseases. Of course, we're able to do this by entering into public-private partnerships with industry, supporting their development efforts, pushing programs from early stages of development all the way through clinical development, and hopefully FDA approval, which of course at that point, we're able to utilize these products during that emergency and at the same time, companies are able to hopefully commercialize these products and sell them out in the open market. Now, all of this, of course, is possible through BARDA's flexible authorities, our non-dilutive funding that we're able to provide companies, our subject matter expertise, and our core services. All of this is focused in on accelerating the development of medical countermeasures to offset the threats that we see. Moving to slide four, the most crucial component of all of this work is our partnership with industry. Since BARDA's inception, we've entered into over 650 different partnerships, and some of those are highlighted here on the slide. And what I want to draw your attention to, and what a lot of people don't fully appreciate or recognize, is that some of these partners are large pharmaceutical companies and some are very small biotech companies. Some of them are found domestically within the United States and others are external to the US, really emphasizing the fact that we are looking for medical countermeasures no matter where they're being developed. We're really ultimately seeking the best product out there to address the threats and ensure that we are optimally prepared. Looking at slide five, of course, it's not just working with industry, it's also working across the US government, working with our partners within the DOD, as well as our partners across the Department of Health and Human Services. It's working with these different agencies that we're able to continue that acceleration effort, aligning our strategies, backfilling on gaps, particularly development and technical gaps, to ensure that products transition from one phase of development to the next phase, really kind of giving, again, that end-to-end -end support to products. Now, I do want to take a moment and pause and talk a little bit about how BARDA is organized, because this will help many of the viewers today understand really where to direct their questions and who to talk to. So as you can see on the slide, there are three different key programs across BARDA. The initial one is the Medical Countermeasures Program, which is occupied by five separate divisions. The first one is the Chemical, Biological, and Radiological and Nuclear Division, or CBRN Division. This is where the antimicrobials branch resides. You also have the Influenza and Emerging Infectious Diseases Division, the Detection, Diagnostics, and Devices Infrastructure Division. This is where all of our diagnostics are developed, including our AMR diagnostics. You also have the Division of Research, Innovation, and Ventures, which is a early stage venture structured product accelerator group. And finally, the Pharmaceutical Countermeasures and Infrastructure Group, which is focused in on manufacturing and logistics. Now, this last group is important because a lot of our subject matter expertise around manufacturing and logistics comes out of that group. We also have our Medical Countermeasures Support Services Program. 
These three groups are really focused in on providing subject matter expertise across all of BARDA's programs to ensure that we have adequate understanding and are able to support companies through their regulatory and quality affairs activities, clinical development activities, and non-clinical work. And finally, the last group, our contracting shop. The men and women of this group are by far the most excellent individuals to be working with. They are the ones that are able to leverage the flexible authorities that BARDA has to ensure that we can enter into these contracts and grants and have a successful portfolio and program that ultimately addresses the threats that we have. Moving to slide seven, BARDA can successfully claim today that we are supporting product development in an end-to-end -end manner, all the way from hit to lead through our program with JLab's Blue Knight, our CarbX program, as well as Drive. Moving these programs into advanced development under our advanced development and research programs, which carries these programs through phase one, all the way through product approval, and then finally product procurement under Project BioShield. At every step of the way, these companies are receiving non-diluted funding and of course that subject matter expertise that I've spoken about. This model by far has been incredibly successful since BARDA was established. Since 2006, we've been able to achieve 84 product approvals, licensures, and clearance across devices, diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines. It is an incredible accomplishment that has been supported by multiple hands across BARDA working together to, to really address these threats within the space. Now, in addition to these product approvals, we've also been able to ensure that we've expanded our preparedness posture through product procurement. Clearly, the work that BARDA has been doing has really been resolving many of the technical as well as market challenges that companies are facing. Really through these procurements, through these development efforts, really emphasizing the development of products for which there is either a limited market or there is a limited return on investment. Now, I want to focus a little bit more on that CBRN division because that is where the antimicrobials branch is. The goal of this, this particular division is to make available at least one medical countermeasure for all CBRN, or CBRN threats. This, of course, is accomplished through three pillars that we have. One is the recognition that we want to invest in medical countermeasures that treat the injury and not necessarily the threat. Now, this, of course, is crucially important following a burn event, a radiation event, or a nuclear event, where that particular threat agent is very fast acting and you ultimately have no time to be able to respond to that threat. You're, you're just left treating the, the injury from that, from that event. The next pillar that we have is to develop threat agnostic medical countermeasures. Recognizing the fact that in the first 24 to 48 hours, you may not necessarily know what the threat has been. So you are left trying to help that patient be able to move towards recovery and stabilize them so that you can, can find the correct and the right medical countermeasure to be utilizing. And finally, we're focused in on developing medical countermeasures for biological threats. This includes bacteria, fungi, and as well as viral infections. All three of these pillars working together are enabling us to develop the technologies to address all of the threats within our space. So looking at slide 10, why antimicrobial products? Why are we so concerned about this space? Well, clearly we recognize looking at our mission that a weapon of mass destruction could be biological in nature. This includes anthrax, plague, tularemia, melidosis, and glanders. But at the same time, if you look across the totality of ASPR's mission space, whether an event is a naturally occurring storm, a hurricane, or a malicious event like a nuclear detonation, we are going to need antibiotics, antifungals, to treat those opportunistic secondary bacterial infections and fungal infections 
that could arise during the recovery and treatment of those patients. Now, at the same time, we recognize that antimicrobial resistance is complicating that public health emergency. Clearly, as we look across the space, there are limited treatment options for antimicrobial resistant infections. And indeed, with the global prevalence of these infections, that alone creates a threat to our domestic health security. We've definitely seen many reports over the last couple of years really highlighting the fact that these threats are on the rise, particularly due to migration, conflict, war, climate change. All of these have impacted the rates of infection, the rates of antimicrobial resistance, and ultimately their spread around the world. So clearly this underscores our need to develop new and next generation antimicrobial products to address the infections of today, as well as those of tomorrow. But of course, at every step of the development process, there is a technical as well as a financial burden. Clearly, the science behind developing a new therapeutic is quite challenging, particularly going from discovery to hit to lead, and then of course, as you design and execute a clinical study. But at the same time, there's very limited funding to support these development efforts. Most investors have abandoned the space, really seeking areas that have a higher return on investment. At the same time, we have seen that the reimbursement system, particularly within the United States, often disincentivizes the use of these novel life-saving therapeutics. Moving to slide 13, the antimicrobials branch at BARDA really recognizes the, the threat that we have within the space, really acknowledging that antimicrobial therapeutics have the opportunity to solve our twin mission of biothreat pathogens as well as antimicrobial resistant secondary bacterial infections. That's why we've definitely been prioritizing and emphasizing the development of these particular products in addressing both of those threats simultaneously really drawing our, our priorities and emphasis from the CDC's priority pathogen list, which coincidentally overlaps uh, in many cases with the WHO's threat list as well. We do seek products that are broad spectrum, as well as products that are really emphasizing the treatment of hospital and community acquired infections. And of course, within this space, we're really prioritizing uh, hospital acquired bacterial acquired ventilator pneumonia, and community-acquired bacterial pneumonia, as well as intra-abdominal infections, wound infections, skin infections, and urinary tract infections. A majority of these, of course, are caused by gram-negative pathogens, which are the most difficult to treat. We have also now started our interest in antifungal products, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation, as well as the development of these products for underserved and special patient populations. In particular, pediatrics, which represent about 24% of the US patient population. And yet when we turn and look at the approved products, only about eight of them over the last 12, 20 years have received pediatric labeling. So really underscoring the need for these therapeutics for children, in addition to their development for adults. As we jump to slide 14, it's really BARDA working with its government partners as well as its international partners. We've been able to support this robust development pipeline that really starts off at hit to lead and carries these programs all the way through FDA approval and post marketing commitments. Through these partnerships, both with industry as well as uh, our government partners and international partners, we've largely bought down a majority of the technical risks that these programs face, as well as some of the financial risks that they face during product development. Now for the remainder of the talk, I'm going to talk about each one of the areas that we work in, that early stage preclinical development work that we do under CARBEX, our advanced development work that we do uh, with our uh, advanced research and development portfolio, and finally, Project BioShield. Starting with CARBACs, 
It was around uh, 2015, 2014 that we really recognized the fact that a lot of preclinical companies were lacking the technical support as well as financial support to really bring those programs further into clinical development. So it was working with NIAID and the Wellcome Trust that Barda and Asper were able to establish the CARBEX program at Boston University. It was launched in 2016 with the stated goal to accelerate these programs and move them further forward into the clinic, really pushing them off the bench and into the clinical space. It's been incredibly successful at doing that since its inception. It's supported over 90 different candidates across the therapeutics, preventatives, and diagnostic space. There are close to 30 programs active in this portfolio today, and roughly 14 of these products have graduated from the portfolio, meeting all of their milestones. And indeed, Five of these programs now have been, are being supported for clinical development. In fact, two of those are being supported by BARDA. Really emphasizing the fact that CARBEX is indeed making these products, these programs more attractive to follow on investment. Now, in addition to the original founding partners within this uh, consortium, we have received, the CARBEX has received additional funding from the governments of the UK, Germany, and now Canada, really emphasizing the fact that we are able to align our priorities in the product, product development space. CARBEX also receives funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. All of these groups working together, aligning their strategies and priorities around early stage development has enabled CARBEX to be as successful as it is. And as we are really looking forward to seeing new programs, new funding opportunities be released from CARBEX over the next uh, several years. Now, this brings us to our advanced research and development portfolio. And I'll talk a little bit about the diagnostics group here, and then we'll get into the antimicrobials group in a second. The diagnostics portfolio is focused, focused in on four different areas, including phenotypic antimicrobial susceptibility tests, uh, the identification of molecular markers of resistance, tests that are able to differentiate between viral and bacterial infections, and finally, sepsis and infection severity. Within these th four priority areas, They've invested over $200 million in the development of these diagnostics and leveraging that BARDA model that I talked about earlier, they've been able to see four programs receive FDA clearance. In fact, most recently over the last couple of months. For those of you out there that are interested and have a diagnostic within this space and want to contact this group, I highly recommend you look to our, our broad agency announcement. This is the BARDA clearinghouse for all of our solicitations and really focus your attention on area of interest number seven. This is the diagnostics uh, area and there you'll be able to understand a little bit more about their priorities, but also find contact information to be able to reach out to them uh, to ask questions and actually request a meeting. This now brings us to the antimicrobials portfolio. This group was stood up in 2010 with the focus in on biothreat pathogens, again, as well as the CDC's priority pathogens. And indeed, this portfolio currently is addressing a majority of the serious and urgent threats that have been identified by the CDC, as well as all of the biothreat pathogens that have been identified. It is a robust portfolio. It stands at 18 different candidates in development. As you can see, several programs are in phase three clinical development today. Over the past year, we've been able to bring in three new candidates. We've seen multiple programs advance in their clinical stage of development, and notably four programs have announced positive top line data from this portfolio, really emphasizing the fact that the work that BARDA is doing to support these companies indeed accelerates them such that they can achieve programmatic success, but also hopefully regulatory success. I do wanna draw your attention to the fact that we've invested over $2 billion within this space, ultimately making BARDA 
and ASPR the second largest funder of antimicrobial products next to the NIH and NIAID. Clearly, what we are doing is, ha is having an impact as we have seen additional products become approved out of this portfolio, as well as the acceleration of product development. Now, I want to return to one of our priorities, and that is antifungals. We announced this last year at BARDA Industry Day, which will be coming up this November. I encourage you to tune into that. But when we were looking at the antifungal space, we were really concerned about the rise in drug-resistant fungal infections, their alarming impact that they have on the community and healthcare settings. But also, we have a requirement now to develop medical countermeasures for drug-resistant fungal infections, particularly drug-resistant Canada and drug-resistant Aspergillus. It's really recognizing the public health need as well as our preparedness need that we launched this effort last year. Our stated goal here is to develop new classes of antifungal products, those that are broad spectrum, really looking at oral and IV. So again, I encourage you to reach out to us if you do indeed have an antifungal product that aligns with this particular approach and strategy. So now we're moving into slide 19. This is Project BioShield. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, Asper and BARDA, one of their requirements, of course, in addition to developing products is to procure them for preparedness. Project BioShield enables us to do that procurement work. In addition to actually procuring these products, it also supports the advanced development of these products, really supporting label expansion and the development of the product and approval of that product for a material threat that we have. And within the antimicrobial space, of course, that again is those biological threats, anthrax, plague, tularemia, melidosis, and glanders. So the antimicrobials branch has been actively leveraging Project BioShield to support the development and enhance our preparedness posture, really seeking to ensure that we are better prepared for these biothreat pathogens, as well as antimicrobial resistant secondary bacterial infections, really enhancing and augmenting our preparedness posture. Now, of course, we do this by entering into public-private partnerships with industry, supporting their product development efforts, and the licensing and approval of these products for biothreat indications. But at the same time, we recognize this funding enables companies to receive support for their post-marketing commitments, including the development and approval of these products for pediatrics. Many folks have acknowledged the fact that these post-marketing commitments are often very challenging to complete and also quite costly. Leveraging Project BioShield to meet our mission critical requirements while at the same time offsetting and discharging a company's high capital costs is a mutual benefit to both the US government as well as these companies. Two examples of this in action are our contracts with Paratech for the development and procurement of Nazira, as well as our contract with Venatorix for the development of Cepapim Teniborbactam. Under both of these programs, we're supporting those post-marketing commitments, the development and approval of that, these products for biothreat indications, and procuring these products. In fact, last year at this time, we were working towards our second procurement of Nazaro, which we were able to complete in December of 2022. So let's look to the future, particularly for the therapeutics and diagnostic space. Some of this I have already highlighted, but it's worth mentioning again that we are focusing in on those antifungal uh, pathogens as well as hospital and community acquired bacterial infections, the development of first in class compounds and broad spectrum antimicrobial products. We're interested in indications that are related to our emergency preparedness mission, particularly pneumonias, bloodstream infections, and skin and wound infections. Of course, oral and IV products are always of interest. And again, supporting those post-marketing and post-approval activities, pediatrics, 
the, the onshoring of manufacturing to really stabilize and bring about greater security to our manufacturing supply chain. As we look at the diagnostic space, they're interested in the development of phenotypic antimicrobial susceptibility tests, molecular assays, viral versus bacterial assays, and again, sepsis and infection severity. Hopefully over the last 20 or so minutes, I've been able to emphasize the work that ASPER and BARDA are doing within this space. We remain committed to the development of antimicrobial therapeutics and diagnostics, really recognizing the threat that these have to our public health, as well as to our own emergency preparedness uh, position and posture. We've been able to invest over $2 billion, as I mentioned, really supporting early stage all the way through clinical development and product approval and procurement. We will continue to do this work, working with our interagency as well as industry partners to ensure that our mission is met and public health issues are addressed. In closing, I do want to highlight our TechWatch program. You can request a meeting through medicalcountermeasures.gov, which is the BARDA website. TechWatch really enables companies to meet with not only branch chiefs such as myself, but also our subject matter experts. Really learn about our thinking around our product development priorities and what those are, as well as get a little bit of advice around product development and some of the challenges that we've seen and things that you might want to think about or consider in the development of your candidate. But in addition to BARDA attendees, there are also members of the DOD, as well as NIAID and the NIH, the FDA and CDC that attend these meetings. So you are really speaking to a robust room of government uh, workers and employees who are fully committed to the development of these products. Finally, just a couple of websites, as I mentioned, uh, medicalcountermeasures.gov is the BARDA website that will link out to the TechWatch requests. It will also have a link out to our broad agency announcement, uh, which is where all our solicitations are. I noted area of interest number seven is for diagnostics. Area of interest number three is for the antimicrobials. So you'll want to look to both of those. They are hosted on sam.gov. The ASPR website, go there if you want to learn more about what ASPR does. And you can also check out the Drive website to learn about their early stage venture programs that they have. And finally, if what I've talked about today interests you and, and sparks your imagination as far as your career, please don't hesitate to check out USA Jobs and look for an opportunity there. So back to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Fabulous. I, as I said on the day that I, you gave this talk, I was just, I was really was blown away by hearing you pull it all together. I mean, I had heard of this piece and that piece and the other piece, but the, the, what, what you've done here is really paint a picture of a sort of a multi-layered, multi-level collaborative process. And you're able to, to reach down into your group to provide support at whatever level is required for a company. And you are doing it across the entire, the entire soup to nuts. <laughs> 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 truly beginning to end, truly, truly impressive. I, I'm just, thank you for that tour. It's just, it's heartwarming. Um, so a, a few questions. Let me just sort of pick through some things as I was uh, jotting them down. You, you talked a little bit about tech watch. Let me just back you up a step and say, mm -hmm. if somebody wants to learn more, what are their options? You mentioned something else, the BARDA industry date. Something I, I went to that a couple of years ago once. But what are what are the the ready portals, if you will, for actually you know the bandwidth of conversation rather than just reading a web page? Absolutely, and I and I think I, I fully encourage companies to reach out to us. Uh, several different ways to do that. Tech Watch courses is one mechanism where you actually physically request a meeting. That meeting is about 45 minutes to an hour long. But I also encourage people to check out the broad agency announcement. There is a, a specific uh, email address within each area of interest that you can send an email to. Someone will usually respond to that quite quickly and be able to set up a phone call with you to talk a little bit more about your program, your, your product that you're, you're interested in receiving support for. 
but it also gives you a chance to kind of learn about our priorities and, and whether or not there is alignment. So it's really phone call conversations, tech watches. You did mention BARTA Industry Day, which is coming up on the 13th and 14th of November, which ultimately enables you to directly physically meet with us and uh, have a, ample networking opportunities there as well. Yeah, the industry day is annual, is it correct? That is correct. It's every single year. Yeah, approximately, approximately November of every year. So, yep. and I, I did a new, when you released the new BAA back in late September, I did a newsletter about this. We'll put the link to that below. And so what Great. you're emphasizing is that going to the BAA where it says, and the contact point for this program is name, correct. email address, don't be shy about dropping them a note. They'd, they'd like to talk to you. Absolutely. And I, I will say that the antimicrobials branch, the moment we get emails, we do try and respond within a couple of days. We're always active in doing that public outreach, uh, understanding what, what companies are, are developing and, and how those products may interest us. And, and the other point to really make here, John, is that if a company comes to us and their product isn't really aligned with BARDA's mission space, and we see that there is alignment with another agency within the US government, we will find a contact for that company to reach out to. Uh, you know, it's nothing worse than having a really good technology fail to move forward just because there wasn't the, 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 there wasn't the right funding partner in the room at the time the conversation was had. So it's, it's reaching out to our DOD colleagues, our, CO, our CDC colleagues, as well as those at NIAID and NIH to really be able to provide that, that robust, comprehensive support. Okay, that sort of gives a kind of a different and deeper feel for TechWatch. You, you guys will look at it and figure and try to find a place, a home for it. A absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, within that TechWatch meeting room, as I mentioned, our DOD, our DOD and NIH colleagues usually are in attendance. And if a program comes in and it's a little bit too early for us, we'll definitely direct that company to NIAID's preclinical services, yeah. where they can really kind of build out and get a little bit more data around that product, maybe de-risk that product a little bit further and make it ultimately attractive to BARDA for follow-on funding. Yeah, yeah. very exciting. Yeah. 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 Something else you mentioned, and I just want to have you emphasize a little bit is, you, you implied and then sort of said that you're interested in the best science anywhere in the world. And are there any limitations on where you will uh, support a company? Or, uh, geographically, can I be anywhere in the world and you'll work with me? There are definitely a few countries that we have, have challenges in working with. Uh, but yes, we are interested in identifying products from around the world that really ultimately address our threat space. Yeah, I think that, that I know that's also true of, of uh, NIAID funding. You know, that the, the, the idea is you do not have to be on, on U.S. soil. You do not have to be a U.S. citizen to apply. Good ideas are good ideas. And we're, you actually are, are after the best of the best. Um, you, you mentioned an idea that intrigued me the first time you, you said it, which was the idea of threat agnostic response tools. Just mm -hmm. can you give me an example of what one of those might be? Definitely, an immune, Im, huh. uh, immunomodulator uh, would be one example where you're attempting to either dial up or dial down the immune response to a particular threat uh, would be one example of that for us. Interesting. So it's outside of specific therapies, and I like the way, sorry, specific diagnoses, and I like the way you described it. The first couple of days, you may not know what in the world has gone wrong, but that's right. The person is ill, and are there tools that, that could be, could make a difference to them? All right. Um, you mentioned the uh, the CDC's priority pathogen list, and you also mentioned the WHO's priority pathogen list. Do you work with both of those priority pathogen lists? Uh, you have a bias about one versus another, and I also uh, throw in the other idea of what does it mean for something to be uh, a local. Uh, or do you care what something's a regional versus a global threat right now? Well, we definitely emphasize the threats that are identified on the CDC's list uh, right now. And of course, many of those same pathogens are found on the WHO's list. Yeah. Uh, 
But I would say that a majority of them are found internationally, globally. So it, uh, we don't necessarily think about, is this a global concern? We would basically look at what the CDC has been highlighting and, and really pull that into our portfolio. Yeah, you know, those lists are really quite comprehensive, I think. They, and, yeah. and, they, and they do get, you know, updated from time to time. I think the CDC's list must be getting close to being due for a revision, but I'm not, I don't know whether they're working on that yet or not. But, but it's the kind of thing that we want it to be pretty stable, but we certainly do want to tune it up over time. Okay. Um, wow. Well, I'm sort of looking at my list of questions, and you actually nicely covered the notion of what do I do if my project's not an obvious fit? And the answer is come talk to us because yep. uh, maybe there's a place for your widget uh, if you can think of it. All right. Well, this has just been super fun. Is there anything that we've not talked about that you'd like to be sure and emphasize other than if you're looking for a job, give us a call? <laughs> Always got to put a plug in for that, John. Always got to put a plug in for that. You know, I think that I, I would really encourage companies to reach out to us with their technologies, with their ideas. Um, you know, we're always going to ask some of the same questions. Have you met and talked to the FDA? What, what advice have they provided you? Um, and I, you know, I think that as long as companies bring in that, that best development plan that they've received feedback from the FDA, we're going to have a great conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, you clearly enjoy what you get to do, and I, I'm just I am thrilled for what you have been, been able to make happen. So, my closing question: What's been the most fun thing you've gotten to do at Barta? Working with companies. Working um, with companies. I, I think that hearing the ideas, working with the scientific minds at companies watching them work through the challenges that they face, work through clinical development challenges, and see success has been the most rewarding thing that I've ever done. Um, it's, it's just incredible to have these partners, to have this level of engagement and, and open dialogue with companies. And they might be talking about their own product or just product development in general, and just hearing those, their thoughts and, and, and ideas and, new opportunities, new ways of thinking. It's its just been excellent. Wow. Yeah. Exciting vision. So maybe I need to come apply for a job at Barta. It sounds like fun. <laughs> we would take you on. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Mark, once again, thank you oh so much for making time to do this. I, I said, I, I really loved the talk when I heard it before. I love it when I heard it here again now. Um, it makes me proud of what you guys have done with the U.S. government's money. I am just very, very impressed. And so um, carry on, young man. Go and, uh, <laughs> go and get a few more products approved. Uh, and uh, you have a great rest of the day. You too. Thank you so much, Sean. Take care. What an absolute treat to get to hear that talk for the second time. I really loved it the first time. The second time, even better. Truly an impressive breadth of activities. And you know, look below for links, a link to the BAA, a link to the newsletter about the BAA, a link to the webpage where you can apply for a job at BARDA if you're excited about going and doing that work. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe for more. See you next time.